Hi there, welcome to the RPS project. Today I'm going to have a look at DTL, which means diode transistor logic. I wanted to try and understand how I can use diode effectively in a circuit, in a DC circuit. Um, so what I've done is I've spent some time uh, trying to create some basic logic gates, just to try and understand what I can do, because that's what DTL is. Diode transistor logic is logic gates. So I'm going to create some logic gates using diodes and transistors. Very simple, should be anyway. So let's have a look at them, let's have a look at some circuits and uh, I'll test them out on the breadboard as well and see if I can uh, get it right. Okay, start with the first logic gate. This is supposedly an OR gate. Uh, better write that on there. OR gate. Hopefully you can see this on the, on the whiteboard easy enough. Now this is really quite a simple circuit um, transistor. Now I'm using a PNP transistor here because <clears throat> what we have is when I get a, a signal from A or B then this will put a high voltage on here because what's happening is the output's there so when I turn the transistor on the transistor will drop the circuit, well, you know, there'll be the, the quickest circuit to ground, will be through the transistor. And there'll be no output at that point, so the output would effectively be low. So in this scenario, a high input will create a high output because we'll be turning the transistor off, supposedly. Um, see, the other thing about this, which I haven't explained, I suppose, is I'm always talking about a logic level from low to high so what we're doing is that so whenever we switch from a low point to a high point so the logic level goes high then we change the output so any logic level of one which is high will give me a high output supposedly so in this now it's very simple because this is a PNP any high coming in from this diode or from this one will mean that um, we raise the voltage at this point that means that this point here isn't it's not great enough for the transistor to be turned on the transistor turns off logic level goes up um, now I've experimented with this one and actually I don't necessarily need both of these resistors I think this one's here more for stability reasons. But hey, I'm just trying to create some basic logic gates here. Uh, nothing too fancy, so I'm not too worried. I shall build it up like that and uh, see how it works. So uh, let's have a look at it. Okay, so here we have the uh, first one, which is uh, the OR gate. I think this is my first OR gate, yeah. The transistors here which is a PNP. I've used an S9012 because I've got a bunch of them, so why not? Um, LED. These are, well, I've got four resistors there. If you remember from the circuit, this one is coming to my um, emitter. That's where my output's gonna be. So with this circuit, any high, will give me a high output. So let's turn it on. Sorry about the noise of the fan on my um, power supply. It's just the way it is, a bit old and noisy. So my two diodes. Supposedly when I turn this on, the transistor will have a voltage that's high enough to mean that it won't be able to turn on. So at the moment, both my gates are on zero. <sighs> Put it to, uh, positive voltage to the to the positive rail which I'm using 5 volts goes high same with the other one the, the other input so either A or B being high I will get a high output so it's an OR gate A or B will result in a high and A and B of course they're both high so there you go your result is you get an output so here we have an OR gate. Hang on a minute. Haven't I already said that? 
Yes, OR gate. This is another OR gate. The reason I'm showing two OR gates is because as I was looking through DTL logic gates, I realised that there's more than one way of creating that logic level, that circuit. And this is a second way of creating, supposedly, an OR gate. So it's not universal that one particular circuit does a specific thing. There can be more than one configuration to create the same logic level circuit. Um, I imagine there's quite a lot of different configurations out there. Some will work better than others. I've just found the ones that I've managed to find and create that seem to do what I want them to do. But I imagine if you look at them and you do a lot of search, you'll find a whole bunch of different circuits that will create DTL logic gates. So this is the second OR gate, which is really quite simple. Again, I'm using um, PNP transistors. Uh, and again, it's very simple. The output's up there. And when both of these are low, again, we're talking this logic level of going high. So whenever we go high, that's that input is high and what we want the output to be. So if they're both low, then both of these transistors are turned on. So the circuit will run through. But if either one of these gets a high input, then that transistor will be turned on. So the circuit's basically disconnected. If it's this one, that circuit will be disconnected. This transistor will be turned off. So the whole circuit switches off and we get a high output. Any high will give me a high. So or gate A or B. So let's have a quick look at that. I know it's another or gate, but a quick look just to show that there is more than one way of doing it. Okay, so here's the second circuit, which is actually also an OR gate, only this time we're using the two um, PNP transistors, and basically when the diodes are low, but they're both low, we don't um, get an output, but any one of them going high will give us an output. So if A goes high, we get an output. If B goes high, we get an output. Because once one of those diodes goes, gets a positive voltage onto the base, then both those transistors are effectively turned off. And of course, if they're both high, then, um, well, <laughs> the LEDs on because I'm using an LED because usually most LEDs operate at about the three volts mark, which is logic level, isn't it? I suppose you know I always think of logic level plus being three, three point three volts, that sort of thing, um, and below that one point five or one volt, then it's definitely a logic zero, a logic low. So any one of them going low. I've still got one high, I'm going to have an output. So it's a, another OR gate. A or B going high will give me a high output. Marvellous. So let's move on. OK, the next one is a NOR gate. So basic setup for this NOR gate. It seems quite simple, using a NPN transistor this time. I've got basic setup, I want to turn this transistor on, will um, turn my output off. So, I mean, when the transistor's not on, I'll get an output. When it is on, obviously that's the best circuit through the transistor, and the logic level goes low. So, turning it on, if I have a high input, gives me a low output. And on this one, it's a NOR gate because the way this is done, we're just using, if I've got more than one input, I'd have, you know, A goes high, the diode puts uh, the voltage there, and let's say uh, five volts supply um, is gonna bring that voltage up enough to turn this transistor on. Of course, logic level goes low, like I say. If they're both low, I get an output because the transistor's not turned on. 
it's just, it's just, it's just very simple, isn't it? Any one of them goes high, the output goes low, which is the opposite of the OR gate. It's now a NOR gate. So let's have a look at that. Okay, the NOR gate, um, which is like the OR gate, only in the opposite way. So with this one, when I've got any one of them goes high, I'll get a low output, which is the desire there. It's, it's the opposite of the OR gate, but either input will drive it um, will drive it low. But of course, when they're both low, I'm going to have an output. So let's turn it on. And as you see, both my out, my A and B are connected to ground, so the transistor turns on because. In this simplest of circuits, I'm literally just turning the transistor on with either input. A or B will turn the transistor on so the circuit won't give an output to the LED. A or B and A and B, of course, as soon as you take them both off, turn to low, the transistor is turned off because there's no nothing to the base so the base isn't gonna get a um, voltage so the transistor turns off and the circuit goes through the LED very simple basic OR gate so uh, let's quickly move on to the next one now I move on to a NOT gate this is probably I suppose in concept the, the simplest thing so I haven't changed my um, logic table, let's just do that, because it is really simple. If I have, and I've only got one input, so that one doesn't count, I've got a one in, I have a zero out. Zero in, one out. So that is the most simple of logics. You could say you could have a logic level where when you get a one in, you get a one out, but then that's just a switch. So use a switch. Um, but yeah, not gate. So the simplest thing with this one is that this is an NPN, and when you turn this on, obviously when this is held high, if you've got a logic high, like I'm saying here, then this diode is now reversed. So the circuit comes this way, say it's 5 volts, you get a slight drop across that resistor and then this just acts as a voltage divider. Well actually this resistor here acts more like a, a stabilising resistor than anything and you get a voltage here that's enough to turn on this junction, transistor turns on, you don't get an output when you switch the input to low, the voltage that's here now means that the diode is forward biased, which means that this point gets driven down to 0 0.7 volts because you've only got one diode between here and ground now. So this voltage divider acts exactly as that, a voltage divider. So it's going to be half the 0 0.7 volts, which is not enough to turn on this junction on the transistor, which means you get a high output because the transistor is now turned off and you get high output. So when this is high, you get zero out because the transistor is turned on. And when A goes low, you'll get an output because the transistor is turned off. Not gate. Exceptionally simple. So let's have a look at it. Okay, now we have the NOT gate, which supposedly should be the simplest, I suppose. Is it? Well, let's turn it on. And at the moment, I've got the input being low. And with a NOT gate, the output would be high, as you can see. Now, what's happening here is that when this transistor, when, sorry, when this connected, uh, input is connected low, and this point here is forced down to 0.7 volts, which means across this resistor, 
and this resistor here, which creates a resistor divider across the base, there's not enough voltage to turn this transistor on. So the output, which is connected to the collector, is now high, relatively speaking, which is enough to make this logic one. Now, this one's a bit goofy, because when I take this out of low, even though I haven't connected to high, the output goes off because effectively we've got a floating input so that effectively this part of the circuit doesn't exist anymore. The resistor and this resistor divider here is what's working and there's enough voltage here now to mean that this transistor will turn on and the level will go low. Of course you also stick it into um, the high um, then it forces it to, to be properly high to be properly reversed in its um, polarity because you've got a positive voltage here in comparison to here. So the whole thing forces this transistor to turn on because this diode effectively is not, it's like it's not there. So it's just down to these resistors turning the transistor on, turning the output low. Not gate, very simple. When it's low, it's when the input's low, the output's high. When the output's high, when the input's high, the output is low. Not gate, very simple. Now, we just I'll just turn it off. This resistor here that goes into the base, I could in fact take that out and put a diode in there. Get in. And all that means is that when we turn this on, I'll put this down to low, because this is forward biased, there's 0.7 of a volt there, that means that 0.7 of a volt is dropped across this diode here, so the transistor has no voltage on the base, so it turns off and we get an output. But of course, when I do that and have it high or floating, this transistor Sorry, this diode is like it doesn't exist. So when the diode doesn't exist, we've got a voltage there, we've got 0.7 of a volt there, and 0.7 of a volt there. So that would be about 1.4 volts, because we've got two diode drops effectively, because that's what needed to turn this transistor on. Transistor's on, logic level, goes low. Input high, output low. Very simple. Let's move on. Okay, so on to the next circuit, which is AND gate. Now again, this is actually relatively quite simple um, because it, it properly uses the, the diodes to create the logic um, in that we start off with two transistors, two NPN transistors, and because we want to have two logic highs to give us an output, we've put the output, or I've put the output, down here. It's quite simple, because it means that if I turn both transistors on, I'll get an output. If either transistor is turned off, then I get nothing. So it's an AND gate, because both inputs have to be on, both transistors have to be turned on, for this circuit to work. And it's quite simple. Again, we're using this idea that um, when these are both high, A and B are both high, then these diodes are reversed, right? So that when, as you can see there, sorry, yeah, is that right? Yeah, they're both high, then the circuit will give me a voltage on the base on both transistors and turn them on. So if we start off with logic level low on here, both are low, then we create that 0.7 volts at this point. And because we've got two diodes at this point, then if you drop 0.7 across there, then there's nothing left to go across the next one, which means there's nothing here, no voltage here, to turn on the transistor. And because these two points are tied, if either A or B are low, then we'll have 0.7 volts. So both the transistors are effectively forced off both of them, even if one of them is low. So we get this scenario that any low will actually give us a low. It's only when we have two 
high outputs to positive output, input, sorry, that will get an output. The other thing is, is that I've got a 1K resistor in here. Mainly I've been using 100 ohm resistors, but this one's a 1K because we need to pull this point up. Um, we need to pull the voltage up. So if you use too low a value resistor, then you're not going to pull that voltage up. So you could use a bigger one, 10K if you wanted, just to make sure that that voltage there is held at a logic level. You know, three volts or whatever it is. So it's high enough to give you a proper output. So let's have a look at that on the circuit board, on the breadboard, should I say. So here we have the AND gate, which um, has got a little bit more to it. We've got two transistors, which are both NPN, and the output is from the effectively the bottom transistor here. So this transistor and this transistor both need to be turned on for this to light up. So turn the circuit on and they're both low at the moment so I'm not going to have any output. But if I put A going high I still don't have anything because only one of the transistors is turned on because what I need is for there to be a positive voltage on the base. And of course when either one of these are tied down to ground because these two points are tied together means this point is forced down to 0.7 volts and of course you've got two diodes here which means you've got 0.7 across this diode which means across this one there's nothing and both transistors are turned off if either one of these happens to be low it's only when they're both high or at least not low do we get an output so they've both got to be high, or at least, like I say, not low. In this circuit, if one of these was high and the other one was floating, you'd get an output because uh, at this point, both transistors would be effectively out of the circuit. Sorry, both the diodes here would be out of the circuit and only this part would be working. So you'd get a voltage on both the bases. But as soon as you put one of these low, the output goes low. So it's an AND gate because both A and B both have to be high in relation to ground for us to have a high output, logic one. Nice and simple. AND gate. So there you go. As you saw, I created some basic logic gates using DTL, diode transistor logic. Um, wasn't too hard, quite simple really. But um, detail, not been used in a long time. It's decades old. I mean, they were using it back in the 50s and 60s. I don't think it's really been used since the mid 70s. Um, and there are much better ways of creating logic gates and, and using logic gates these days. <coughs> if you get integrated circuits these days, but logic gates, which are very simple to use um, and much more effective at doing that. But I suppose that brings me to my question of, why learn it? Because to me, sometimes you might just want that one diode or two diodes. You know, those two diodes are a lot less room to take up than putting in a specialised IC. And also, it's one of those things that, uh, I suppose it's, it's a stepping stone. It's one of the stepping stones in electronics that help build electronics. So, learning it is useful. And um, hopefully, if you're just doing a very simple circuit, it'll work out much easier just to shove a diode in there. So. There you go, DTL. And if you liked this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. Subscribe, and all comments are welcome. See you next time.